Tom Robbins in Jitterbug Perfume once wrote, a tale that begins with a beat ends with the devil. And uh, he made that quote for good reason, because cooking with red, these uh, blood red beets leaves the hands blood stained. And so the chef who slaughters beets uh, cannot hide. She can only run from the scene of the crime. Uh, and, uh, and so beets are, intri beets are intriguing. Uh, when I start uh, thinking about beets, the first thing that comes to mind is intrigue. Uh, despite their nefarious blood red look, that red color and its earthy complexity uh, give rise to uh, beets numerous health benefits. And that's uh, what we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk a bit about cooking with beets and I'm gonna talk about beets health qualities and, uh, and what it's like to eat a beet, uh, just so that we uh, move beets to the center of our awareness and that we are aware of what we're experiencing um, on our tongue and in our bodies and how that points to the uh, pharmacological effects. Uh, beets are, uh, have a pleasing sweetness and a warm satisfaction. And, uh, and so despite their, their foreboding blood red color, uh, they have a very sentimental and traditional uh, role in the diets of Slavic peoples and Northern Europeans, uh, and uh, and so uh, and and throughout the world, not just limited to that culture, but uh, but throughout the world. Um, so very excited again to be uh, doing this presentation today. Uh, my name is John Immel. I'm the director and founder of the Joyful Belly School of Ayurveda. And today's talk is sponsored by our Ayurveda Health Counselor Certification Program uh, for folks who are interested in um, uh, healing as a way of life uh, and, and, as a, and as a career, uh, he healing others in the world around you and in your communities and um, uh, giving people better quality of, uh, quality of lives. This uh, talk is uh, a foretaste or a foreshadow of what you would get uh, studying in our programs. And in fact, a lot of the research done uh, for today's talk was done by Joyful Belly students um, and graduates as part of a uh, study in our food lab, uh, 19 students uh, experimented with beets for three days and noted their uh, uh, the effects that beets had on their body. And uh, we also uh, researched the literature on beets and scientific studies and putting all of that together for uh, today's presentation. And uh, like I said in the, in, uh, the pre-call chat, uh, there, uh, what we found was better than what we thought with beets. Uh, I, I knew beets were, were great. Uh, I knew that beets were great for this time of year. This is February in the Northern Hemisphere. So uh, we're just starting to see uh, some signs of spring. The, um, the crocuses and the daffodils are pushing up uh, through the soil. And we know that spring is on its way. Our body knows that spring is on its way. Uh, our, uh, uh, and our body's already uh, making plans for spring and adjusting for spring and beets can help with that process. And we're gonna talk about that um, as we uh, march forward uh, with today's presentation. And, uh, and so beets are sweet. Uh, that's the first thing I wanna mention is that they're sweet. And when we see a food that's sweet, we know it's nourishing. So we're gonna start there. It's bright red color uh, tells us that it uh, probably has some uh, special compounds in it and phytochemicals uh, that can help us. Beets also have an earthy, bitter aftertaste. And, uh, and so we're going to, uh, immediately when we see those bitters, we're going to know some things about the beet, even if we know nothing else. Even if we don't have a lab textbook in front of us, we're going to know some things. Um, the raw beet is sharper, hotter, and more fibrous and astringent, difficult to, to chew. They're tougher and even more feverish, right? There, there's a pungency. Uh, to raw beets. And one student noted in the study that my, heart, uh, my heartbeat increased almost immediately after I ate beets. And 20 minutes later, my face turned red. So, uh, so that uh, testifies uh, that these beets are, are doing something to our blood. 
that they are invigorating uh, the heart. And, uh, and if your face turns red, we're, we're, we know that blood is moving, right? Um, and that it's close to the surface of the skin. Cooked beets are sweet, sweeter. Uh, they are still a little bit bitter, uh, but they're less astringent. So the change as you go from uh, from the uh, cooked uh, from the raw beets to the cooked beets is just a little more mellow. Uh, they're sweeter and softer, uh, easier to chew, and um, uh, altogether a bit more mild. But the bitter. The bitterness does not entirely uh, disappear, and the astringency does not entirely disappear. And that, uh, as, as I said, gives a hint to some of their medicinal quality. Uh, and um, all right, let's talk just a little bit about cooking with beets. Here's a picture of raw beets, and you can see the tops here too are also brilliantly colored. Um, they are they're nice and crunchy too. I think they offer just such great texture in a dish. Oftentimes, I'll chop off the greens on top. Uh, saute them a bit and uh, serve them as a side dish uh, to the beetroot. Look at those beautiful rings inside the beet. Uh, such a uh, such a wonderful way to make a meal um, seem exciting is to add just a little beets to it, adding that flash of color. Uh, something that gives that visual appeal helps people uh, to crave the beets. So uh, uh, for raw beets, you can grate them with a cheese grater and stick it right, uh, stick them right atop salads. Uh, you can stick them in a food processor as well to co uh, color up uh, a dish. And the red color in beets, by the way, is used as food coloring uh, but, uh, uh, industrially. Uh, if you're not going to uh, eat them raw, you can cook them. And generally, when you're cooking beets, you're going to cook them until they're tender. Then uh, you can also roast them. Uh, I, I roast them on 425 degrees for about 30 minutes or so, or until tender, depending on your oven. If you have a convection oven, a little bit less time, a uh, traditional oven, a little bit more time. Uh, my favorite roasted beet recipe is, uh, is uh, basting them with olive oil, uh, sprinkling some black pepper on them, uh, roasting them in the oven until the edges just get a little crispy and um, and and roasted, and then uh, while I'm waiting for that to to finish, I reduce uh, some balsamic vinegar until it becomes a bit like a thick syrup. Now it's not going to look like a thick syrup when it's hot, but as soon as it cools, it'll turn into a thick syrup um, if you've reduced it, and uh, and then you drizzle that on top. What a great recipe! that uh, nice sour taste and the pungency of the balsamic vinegar and that brown, that dark brown color just accentuates uh, the, the deep complexity of the beet and uh, uh, really just brings it alive. Uh, the roasted beets are very sweet uh, and, um, and so just very, very tantalizing, uh, wonderful for February uh, because of beets blood building qualities uh, and, uh, and the balsamic vinegar's blood invigorating and stimulating uh, qualities. So try that if you've never tried it before to reduce some balsamic vinegar, just take a, uh, a quarter cup or a, ha a half cup of balsamic vinegar, boil it for about 10 minutes or so. And uh, until you start to see it thicken just a little bit, and that's your sign that when it cools, it's going to be quite thick. Uh, so then drizzle it as it starts to cool and gets to the right uh, viscosity or consistency, and you'll have a wonderful uh, uh, meal. Beets can be uh, juiced as well, although I don't recommend juicing beets on a daily basis. I know a lot of people do, but they're high in oxalic acid, which irritates the kidneys, and that is all um, neutralized by cooking. So I don't, I, I have no problem with uh, people juicing beets uh, a little bit, uh, here and there, but not as a daily regimen. It can increase kidney stones and aggravate UTIs and other things. So not uh, for daily consumption. Uh, juicing is, is an intense thing to do generally. Uh, so you want to treat juicing as if it's an herb, not a food, and, um, and study its medicinal properties more carefully if you're going to eat a juiced food. Uh, pureeing beets, on the other hand, is one of my favorite ways to consume uh, beets. Very grounding to my 
uh, vata uh, stimulated uh, constitution. And I like to uh, puree those beets and cook them for about three hours. And they become very tender, very sweet when you do that. And, uh, and then my favorite spices to add are uh, lots of cloves and, uh, and then uh, also lots of black pepper. And you, uh, it's just uh, cloves are a vasodilator. Um, and so you just feel like your, your blood is just flushed and it's very comfortable for a person who has a cold constitution. If you are a cold deficient type constitution and, or if you're in a cold climate, uh, the uh, beets with a lot of cloves and black pepper is, uh, is just going to be deeply satisfying and, and, and flush that blood throughout your system. Uh, I, I think you will uh, enjoy that sensation unless you're a, an overheated uh, body type. All right, so there's a picture of beet, beet puree served here with dill. Uh, let's look at uh, some other common preparations of uh, beets as we move towards uh, the uh, medicinal properties uh, later on. Uh, so a popular beet dish in Eastern Europe is called borscht. And you can see the spelling on the screen here, B-O-R-S-C-H-T. One of my, uh, another one of my favorite ways of preparing beets, I've given you my top three beet recipes already here, which is uh, you take uh, beets, you mix it with, uh, you put some potatoes in there and usually uh, it's in chunks, not pureed as in the photo. Um, and, uh, and then you, know, uh, you put some vinegar in with the boar. So vinegar, uh, white potatoes, and beets, and then you can use uh, various spices according to, uh, to the culture. Sometimes some parsley in there. Some people will put a dollop of sour cream in there. Uh, delicious, tasty. Uh, you can put some cabbage in it too. Beets, white potatoes, uh, cabbage, vinegar, parsley. That is uh, gonna be a basic borscht and you can build on it from there. Uh, in, uh, in Slavic countries, also beets, and, and in Scandinavian countries, beet is combined with horseradish. Um, it may all, and then served with cold cuts and sandwiches. So you can get a kind of red horseradish dish, uh, and, uh, and that's, uh, that's exciting and delicious. You put it right on those cold cuts, uh, right on a sandwich. Also, uh, you can add it to a meal with uh, meat and potatoes. Um, you can make a hash with, uh, with beef. So in Northern Germany, beetroot is mashed with beef in a dish called lobskous. I don't know if I'm saying that properly. Uh, in Indian cuisine, uh, uh, you sometimes find yellow beets and, uh, and you also uh, see them cooked and spiced. Uh, and uh, so all, all over the world, you find beets, uh, but especially in the Nordic, uh, Northern European and Slavic uh, countries, Eastern Europe. All right, a little bit about the plant. Uh, the red beetroot originated from a native of uh, Southern Europe. Actually, beets were grown by the Romans, uh, the ancient Romans, the ancient Greeks, and the ancient Egyptians. They were mostly cultivated for their leaves rather than their roots, uh, but then the roots came to be used uh, later on. And, uh, uh, and also, this is a fun fact about beets. White beets are the source of most table sugar. So there's a variety of beet bread for its sweetness and beets are naturally sweet, uh, but a white beet is particularly sweet and uh, it is, uh, the sweetness is extracted and used for table sugar. That's how table sugar is uh, formed and processed. Uh, very interesting to, I was very interested to find out that uh, table sugar came from beets. I thought, I always thought it was sugar cane and uh, indeed, uh, you can't, we do have some sugar from sugar cane, but the most comes from the beet. All right, let's move right along. Let's get down to uh, some of beet's medicinal uh, qualities. And uh, you can see there were some notes on the screen there. If you want to pause when you get the recording of today's presentation, and you can read through those a little more carefully if you, if you wish. I'm not gonna go over every single thing on the notes, but I wanna uh, give everyone a really good summary of what beets can do for you. And here was the surprising thing about beets. I had always known beets uh, to be a liver cleanser and, uh, and a blood builder, 
but one of the uh, surprising findings uh, and, uh, and uh, that our students let us know through just experiencing it in their body, uh, students, uh, when we were going through this experiment, started saying, I feel like there's more blood running through me, or I feel spreading heat in my blood. Another student said, I seem to have more bleeding this menstrual period. And another uh, student said, my blood feels very nourished. And all of that got us thinking about the uh, potential uh, that beats may be blood moving and, uh, and also uh, strengthening or improving athletic endurance. And as we uh, looked into it, we, uh, we found that the nitrates in beet convert to nitric oxide and that improves oxygen, oxygen delivery to the tissues. So uh, there have been numerous studies showing that those who drink beet juice prior to exercise are able to exercise longer and show increased cardio respira uh, respiratory endurance. That's great. A, a, a vegetable that improves athletic performance and endurance due to the improvement in blood flow and oxygen delivery uh, to the tissues as well as to the brain. So this effect can help you uh, think more clearly uh, and, um, and also uh, improve athletic performance, uh, give you more energy, a uh, student noted, I noticed the beats made me feel more alert, like I have more blood running through me. Another says, they give me energy. They make me feel strong. Another student said, I felt active and fit, and, um, and the energy levels were higher. Eleven students said they had more energy, as opposed to one student had less energy, and the other seven uh, did not notice an effect. The, uh, one of the key effects of nitric oxide is that it is a vasodilator and, um, and also that it improves endothelial function. What's the endothe uh, endothelial function? It is the blood vessel walls, basically. So it's improving the function of the blood vessel walls, um, making them more elastic and flexible. Um, which is helpful for those who have atherosclerosis. It also, by dilating blood vessels, it reduces blood pressure. And uh, we'll find out later that as a cholagog, uh, beets are also uh, bl a blood thinner. So great, uh, great to know that we have a blood mover and an oxygen booster uh, in beets. Some of you may be more familiar with beets effect on the liver that uh, beets are known as a liver cleanser, as well as a liver nourisher. You may have heard uh, that beets build the blood and improve blood quality. Let's uh, go through some of the ways it does that. Well, first, uh, beets have a cholagog effect, and that means they flush the hot, sharp bile from the liver. So your liver makes bile, stores it in the gallbladder, and when you have a cholagog, it, uh, the gallbladder squirts the bile out of it by contracting, and the liver is stimulated uh, to, um, to release more bile as well, and also to make more bile. And that ultimately refreshes the liver. Now you could tire your liver out with cholagogs, but not with beets, because beets are sweet. And beets provide energy and fuel that nourishes the liver while it is uh, getting stimulated. Uh, so I, it's, a, it's a safe safer one for a uh, very weak, liver. In any case, flushing that bile from the liver uh, keeps the liver cool, and ultimately it keeps the blood cool. Bile is a hot substance. It's sharp. It's irritating. It irritates your bowels. And that's one of the reasons why beets are a laxative. Uh, beets are high in fiber, and they, have, and they cause that hot bile to, to flush out of the intestines, and that um, helps clear the bowels, and, in, for, and it also clears the liver. So we have a great cleanser here. Uh, one of the uh, side effects of improving blood quality and detoxifying the liver uh, is that uh, beets improve eyesight. Several students noted that their vision became clearer. Another said, my eyesight improved this week. And that's a natural consequence of beets, liver cleansing, blood cleansing, and anti-inflammatory nature. I use this all the time, folks. 
whenever I feel that uh, my eyes are, are, are a little blurrier than normal, I um, treat my liver uh, with uh, things that nourish the liver as also, and also with things that cool it and I reduce toxicity in the blood and that improves my eyesight. The next day, my eyesight is a little bit better. So uh, it's, a, it's a great way to be nice to your eyes, to um, uh, look to the liver. All right, bile is also oily. So when you draw bile out of the liver and gallbladder, you're also pulling oil out of the body. And that is why cholagogues improve fat metabolism. Now in February, this time of year, I mentioned that the body is preparing for spring. And that means uh, that it's releasing fats into the blood um, and out of the skin. You get a warm spell in February, uh, your body will, will release a ton of fats from the skin and that fats uh, will be in the blood, thickening the, uh, up the blood. When you pull oil out of the liver and out of the gallbladder, it uh, ultimately helps drain those fats from the blood. There's a lot of toxins in those fats. Uh, fat tissue does store toxins. So uh, as we draw those uh, blood fats out of the body, we're also helping to draw toxins um, out of the body. Oftentimes, if you have a cholagog like beets, you'll, uh, you'll get a refreshing sensation in the eyes. And that's your sign that it's uh, clearing the heat out of the blood and probably improving uh, your vision. Now, how do we know that beets are a cholagog? Well, uh, uh, there are a few ways. Uh, one, you can measure the amount of bile in the uh, stool, uh, but also the bitter taste of beets and the ample fiber of beets are also clues that uh, beets are, uh, um, are a cholagog because fiber and bitter taste flush the liver. Also beets bright red color uh, points to some compounds that stimulate the liver like beta carotene and other flavonoids that, uh, that also help the liver. And, uh, and so we know just from looking at it that it's going to be, uh, it's going to have effects in the blood, effects on the liver. And when we taste it, uh, some of those effects are confirmed. Uh, all right, if you eat beets, uh, your, your pee and your stools are going to turn red and you're not bleeding internally when that happens. Uh, your urine may look pink or reddish and you think, oh no, blood is mixed into my urine. It's not the case. Same thing, stools will turn a reddish color, uh, but it doesn't mean that you are bleeding. Um, I mentioned already that beets are laxative because of the cholagog effect and the fiber. Students said my stools were softer Eight uh, students reported more frequent stool as opposed to three students reporting less frequent stool. 15 students said that the stools were softer as opposed to two students saying the stools were harder. Uh, students said they had a, uh, one student said I had an urge to eliminate within an hour or two of eating the beets. The uh, liver flushing, and laxative colon clearing effects of beets resulted in a, uh, a, a smaller coating on students' tongues, which is a sign that it's reducing blood toxins. Nine students reported a uh, less coating on their tongue as opposed to three students reporting more coating on their tongue. As you can see, not every person's body is the same. And so we should expect uh, people will have different effects. Uh, what does all this mean? It means if you eat beets and you notice more coating on your tongue, it's not having a cleansing effect for you, even though for most people it does. 12 people reported faster digestion as opposed to only two slower. Um, and that blood moving property of beets as well as the laxative effect uh, all combines uh, to make digestion more vigorous and elimination uh, more frequent. All right, let's get down to the blood here. I said earlier that uh, beets improve the quality of the blood uh, by uh, its liver flushing effects, but also uh, beets have significant antioxidants and flavonoids 
uh, that scavenge free oxygen radicals help to ward off uh, inflammation. And, um, and all of that uh, gives beets a blood uh, cleansing quality, that it improves the quality of the blood. It also nourishes the blood. Well, the sweetness, anything that's sweet ultimately is going to nourish our body in some ways. Uh, it may nourish our blood plasma, make our blood plasma sweeter. Beets also are high in iron. And so they're useful in cases of anemia, especially because of their warming qualities. That vasodilating property moves blood and that uh, relieves uh, the effects of anemia somewhat. Uh, but it's iron uh, building, blood building properties are, uh, are very useful. I've been giving beets to my wife all week. What could be better in a postpartum uh, period, but foods that are high in iron uh, to, uh, to help her after losing blood during uh, the birthing process. And, uh, and also at, at postpartum, you want to keep your stools uh, soft. Beets are useful for that. So my wife has been eating uh, beets, molasses, and, uh, and other iron-rich uh, foods uh, over the last week. It's unusual and unique, by the way, to have uh, a food that both nourishes and cleanses. So let's, um, you know, let's just enjoy that wonderful fact about, uh, about beets. All right, great. Uh, one thing which I wanna mention is that those flavonoids in beets, your body tries to get rid of them uh, soon after they're eating. And that also aids in the cleansing process. Uh, it, uh, it also activates, the, and your body attempting to get rid of those flavonoids activates enzymes uh, that helps to, to remove carcinogens and, uh, and other bad stuff. All right. Um, that beets improve blood quality, build blood, and also nourish the liver while gently cleansing it uh, leaves uh, me wondering whether beets are useful for COVID. Now, I'm not going to say they are um, uh, without research data to back this up. But what I am going to say is from my experience working uh, with uh, COVID clients after about three, four, five days in, uh, you start to see a yellow coating on the client's tongue, which is a sign of liver distress. And, um, and also uh, patients who have uh, COVID more severely, uh, you see lots of changes in iron metabolism um, due to COVID and lots of destruction of red blood cells. So we want a food that is going to relieve the liver, build the blood and scavenge free radicals in the blood for a blood destroying uh, disorder like COVID. And again, I'm not gonna claim that uh, it will produce our results for anyone on the call, but I am speculating that it might. I've said before why beets are uh, most useful in February. Although in, throughout the fall, uh, the uh, satisfaction and grounding nature of, uh, of beets is useful in the summer. Uh, the uh, blood improving effects of beets are very useful. And then in the spring, the way that uh, beets improve uh, blood movement, as well as removing fats from the blood is very useful. Uh, so one thing which everyone should be uh, really cognizant of is that the blood becomes very stagnant in winter due to cold. And we're still in the cold season. Yes, our body is preparing for spring, uh, yes, there may be a warm spell or two, but relatively, uh, blood is very stagnant this time of year, and we need blood movers. Turmeric, beets uh, are two great uh, blood movers that can be helpful to just keep the body um, keep the body fresh. You might notice your skin looks a bit dull in January due to the lack of blood flow. Also, that continues into February. By April, you're gonna look 10 years younger. It's just around the corner uh, because the blood flow will return to the surface of the skin. Uh, beets can aid in that process uh, without uh, opening up the exterior too much as say uh, something like uh, uh, mint will do later on in the season. So a few months from now, we'll be discussing aromatics uh, to continue that blood moving 
blood opening process. All right, beets ground and relax the nerves. Why? Several mechanisms here. Because of its sweetness uh, and satisfaction, that's relaxing to the body. The reduction of toxins also makes your nerves less jittery. Uh, several students noted, my tongue trembled less. Uh, and uh, trembling tongue, look at your tongue in the mirror. Is it trembling? If it is trembling, something is stimulating your nervous system and uh, making you jittery. And often that's toxins. So we want to get rid of those toxins. Beets helps with that. And it's relaxing in many ways. Uh, as a vasodilator, anything that dilates your blood vessels and relaxes the blood vessels, improves blood flow, very relaxing to your muscles, very relaxing to your whole body. So six students reported less muscle tension as opposed to only one student reporting more. Nine students had less anxiety as opposed to zero students having more anxiety. One student said, my nerves are calm, my blood feels nourished, but fat seems undernourished. So interesting, the student did not experience that beets uh, would uh, cause weight gain. I noticed a feeling of clarity, clearer vision and released tension. I stopped clenching my jaw, said another student. The oxygen improving effects of beets also uh, help you feel more alert. Uh, so this, uh, the relaxation that beets offer doesn't make you sleepy. It just makes you more relaxed and more alert. Not bad, right? Um, here's what students said. I do not feel any discomfort or anxiousness or hyperactivity when I eat beets, but I do feel slightly more alert. My mental clarity seemed a bit better. All right, finally, we can deduce, and also the research supports this, that beets would be a warming, relaxing aphrodisiac. So I, uh, I put on the, uh, I, I published beets on Valentine's Day for this very reason, because the warmth that comes uh, from beets, as well as the satisfaction. It's relaxing. The sugars in beets actually add energy. So it makes you uh, feel more alert, more relaxed, uh, good blood flow. All of that um, uh, comes together uh, to make beets an excellent aphrodisiac. It was used as an aphrodisiac in Roman times. Uh, here's what uh, students had to say about beets' warming qualities that uh, the warm, full sensation that beets gave me left me feeling grounded and satisfied. Uh, another student said, I feel warmth on my tongue and in my belly, and I feel satisfied. One student said, I felt the beets were cool in my mouth, but warm inside my belly. That's interesting. Uh, many foods have different effects in different parts of the body. Just things to think about. Now, here was something that was surprising. Uh, numerous students uh, talked about uh, their mouth being more juicy after eating beets. And I don't know the reason for uh, this juiciness. That's something I'll have to do a little more research on, but it's worth reporting. One student said, my mouth was super juicy with saliva 15 to 30 minutes after eating beets. And other students uh, testified to the nourishing qualities of beets uh, uh, by saying, the cracks on my tongue were less deep and fewer in number. Uh, so a cracks on the tongue indicate that the tongue is deflating uh, and, um, uh, and that's a sign of dryness. So when we see that the cra cracks are disappearing, we know that uh, something is moistening. All right, good. A few uh, notes on uh, buying and prep of beets and then I'll go through a few contraindications uh, as we move towards a uh, conclusion of our presentation. So uh, uh, when you're buying beets, choose small to medium sized beets that feel firm with smooth skin. Choose small or medium sized beets. They tend to be more tender than the large ones. Avoid beets with hairy root tips. These may be tough. Uh, look for perky crisp greens at the top of the beet. Note that as beets age, they become dehydrated and soft. Choose beets that are heavy for their size and firm. Um, you may wonder whether to peel the skin before cooking. It's very easy to peel a beet after it's cooked. The skin just literally falls off. So 
Um, so yeah, uh, I recommend that you cook them with the skin on um, until they soften and then just uh, pick them up with a bit of tongs and take a fork and just uh, scrape the skin right off. It'll just mostly fall off. And, uh, and you can peel them with a potato peeler if you want, uh, but it's not necessary. Then uh, you can uh, take the hot beets and puree them after the skin falls off or whatever you want to do. Or you can puree them with the skins on too if you bought organic. All right, I talked about how beets are high in oxalic acid, which can irritate the kidneys, lead to UTIs and kidney stones. So be careful uh, juicing beets on a daily basis. Oxalic acid is in many, many different kinds of greens. So uh, look up and see whether the greens that you're juicing have oxalic acid as well. Don't destroy your kidneys uh, just to uh, get the healing effects of, uh, of vegetables. Uh, but many greens do have oxalic acid. Your body's pretty good at dealing with oxalic acid unless it's in a concentrated form like juicing. So you don't need to worry about how much beets you eat, um, but you do need to worry about how much beets you juice and drink. Uh, another uh, one student mentioned that she felt much drier in her body and skin and even had an eczema outbreak through this experiment. And, um, you know, I, 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 I don't have an explanation of that. Uh, it may be something that would have happened anyway to the student. Uh, maybe the astringency of beets causes a little bit of dryness. Uh, maybe the beets uh, reduced too much oil in the person, in the student's body, and that uh, made them feel a little dry. So a person who has a very small amount of fats may experience a little more dryness in the body and skin. But unless you're uh, very depleted, most people will notice that their skin feels more moist, uh, not more dry. Now, what gives beets uh, that vasodilating quality that improves athletic performance? It's nitrates. And we're all used to avoiding nitrates like the plague because they're used as a preservative in meats, right? Well, nitrates are everywhere in nature. Um, in many, many vegetables, there are lots of nitrates. There's some speculation as to whether um, it, it's the concentration or, uh, or something else in meats that makes uh, nitrates bad for you when you're buying them in meats, uh, but not quite as bad for you when you're having them in vegetables. I just want to mention that issue uh, because it is the nitrates of beets that gives it that vasodilating, um, athletic endurance, improving uh, abilities. Uh, let's see, for the doshas. Uh, beets are sweet and warm and nourishing and satisfying and builds blood and improves circulation. So that means it's going to be helpful for those depleted vata type constitutions that tend to be underweight, cold, deficient. Uh, beets are sweet and bitter, so they reduce pitta. Yes, they uh, are warming, uh, but don't let beets warmth make you think that beets aggravate pitta. Uh, pitta isn't just heat. Doesn't just mean you have a hot constitution. Pitta is heat with corruption of blood. And if you don't have corruption of blood, you don't have aggravation of pitta. Uh, that's why uh, the ancient texts say that you need to have a yellow tongue in order to have a true pitta imbalance. We know that, uh, that pitta can go out of balance without yellow on the tongue. Um, but uh, just remember that pitta is not just heat, it's heat with corruption of blood. Uh, now, uh, beets are bitter, they're warming, and they thin the blood. Uh, they are uh, detoxifying to the fats. All of that makes it great for kapha, the stagnant, congested kapha type, right? That's why we're having beets this time of year. Um, and uh, uh, so, but beets are really sweet. So kapha may, may think, oh, I should avoid beets because they're sweet. And I'm just going to say beets are considered safe for kapha. Why? And potentially even helpful. Because uh, even though they are sweet, the other compounds in beets, the phytochemicals, improve insulin uh, sensitivity. And that gives beets a medium glycemic index score only. So if you're trying to reduce blood sugar levels or you're worried about um, uh, uh, beets um, giving you weight gain because they're a root vegetable or something like that, uh, you don't need to fear uh, beets. All right. Um, I want to thank everyone for today's presentation. Uh, we'll conclude uh, by saying that beets build the blood while cleansing the liver. It's a relaxing route 
that boosts athletic performance and is a warming aphrodisiac. It's perfect for spring. Uh, today's talk has uh, been sponsored by our Ayurveda Health Counselor Certification Talk. This is a taste of the kinds of things you would learn uh, by studying at Joyful Belly. Uh, and, I, uh, and I hope you, uh, you found today's presentation exciting, interesting, and learned a bunch. And I look forward to answering your questions uh, just uh, uh, after, after the call. Uh, so let me, uh, let me take a look at some of the chat. I saw the chat box going. So let me uh, scroll up and see what folks have been asking about. Uh, feel free to type your question in the chat box. And if you don't have access to the chat box, you can also uh, unmute your mic and, um, and let me know your question. OK, do I peel uh, beets first? Uh, I answered that one already. OK, good. Uh, several folks want to copy the Google Doc. Uh, that's uh, sweet. I'm glad that uh, that you'd like it. Um, I'm going to say I, I don't give out the Google Docs, but uh, you can look at, at the recording and uh, and you can see as I scroll through it, it'll be on the recording. Is warmed beet juice helpful to nourish vatas? Well, again, I, I, I want to be uh, cautious around uh, beet juicing. Uh, for vatas, because uh, it could irritate their kidney. Vatas already have an aggravated kidney. In fact, what is vata? Let's think about that for a second. There are various ways to describe what vata is. Uh, one thing that, a way that I like to describe vata is hyperadrenalism, that vatas have adrenal glands that, uh, that are super strong and, uh, and ready to just pump those stress hormones out, which keeps uh, vata in a state of hyperactivity. Um, but also uh, vata is characterized by a, a leaky kidney that irritation or for whatever reason, vata people pee a lot and they can't hold on to their liquids. So vata people in particular need to be very careful uh, with consumption of oxalates or anything that irritates the kidneys. Uh, beets have a lot of potassium in them and uh, that could make a person pee a lot. And we generally try to encourage vata to hold on to fluids, right? If we can calm the adrenals and hold on to fluids, you're done pacifying vata, right? That's, that's because that's what vata pretty much is, hyperadrenalism and leaky kidneys. Uh, so how much beets uh, were the students consuming? Tina, we did not control for that uh, because students have different uh, bodies. And, uh, and the same dose for a kapha person is completely has a completely different effect uh, than uh, on a vata person. Sometimes a vata person needs a quarter of the same herb as a kapha person to get the same effect, and sometimes even more. So we did not control for that, um, but uh, but our students have been um, uh, coached and done many of these food experiments, and so they kind of uh, have developed uh, some instincts around around these. And as I said. Um, our conclusions uh, for this presentation are not based upon uh, the student observation uh, alone, but corroborated through our research and knowledge of both Ayurveda and um, uh, Western uh, medicine. All right, uh, one was asked, uh, one student, thanks for letting us know these are okay for Pitta. I have liver issues from alcohol and beets really help. Uh, great. Great, good, I'm glad. Uh, yeah, if you have a yellow tongue, I think uh, yellow coating on the tongue or any other signs of high pitta, uh, then beets uh, may be supportive for you. Milena asks, what was in beets and greens that is dangerous for the kidneys? It's oxalates, oxalic acid. And are there any nutritional differences between red beets and golden beets? Yeah, yeah, those, uh, those, red, those red colors, um, I mean, they are a sign of different phytochemicals in them. I haven't, uh, you know, gone specifically into the difference, uh, but but yeah, I'm assuming that there's going to be some differences there. Uh, what is blood corruption? So, Milena, blood corruption can mean a variety of different things. It's a sort of catch-all term where one, it could refer to changes in blood chemistry. If your blood chemistry is off, you're going to feel anxious. Your muscles are going to be jittery. Uh, your tongue is going to be trembling. Uh, so, replenishing electrolytes and getting blood sugar levels normalized, all that kind of stuff, is helpful. Uh, typically, when I refer to blood uh, corruption, though, I'm referring to some problem with the red blood cells, anemia, uh, or, uh, or bile, bilirubin um, in the blood. 
So Bill, when, when the liver is stressed, it leaks bile into the bloodstream, which has an effect of irritating the body and making the person more irritable, more angry, hotter. Uh, you could say that pitta is, right? I said what vata is before. In some ways, you could say that pitta is bile in the blood. What makes a pitta person hot and irritable is bile in the blood. And there are some other things too. Chronic inflammation uh, can as well. Uh, and that's not exactly blood. Chronic inflammation is not exactly blood corruption, but pretty close because inflammation often corrupts the blood. Uh, so you see this with COVID. You see that the red blood cells start to get deformed. They start to die. Um, the liver gets stressed. There's more bilirubin in the blood. All of that um, I would call corrupted blood. All right. Let's see. Is beet powder a good substitution when I don't have actual beets? Great question. Uh, Marie Ellen, I don't, uh, I don't have the answer uh, uh, to that. Uh, I'm assuming it has some of the properties, but not all of them. Some things break down with cooking. Um, you know, it depends on the drying process too. How often can, should we eat cooked beets? I don't know. I think my, my, uh, without uh, having research dosage specifically, um, if I had beets twice a week, I would consider that uh, to be enough. I wouldn't ne necessarily eat it every single day. That's true for most foods. I don't eat most foods every single day. Are the carbs, sugars, and beets something to worry about if you've got a fatty liver? I think that uh, the research shows that beets can be actually helpful for that. Uh, does commercial beet juice have benefits or must you freshly juice them to truly get the benefits you described? As I said, I'm not a huge fan of beet juicing um, and fresh juice is always better than the commercial uh, sold variety that's been sitting around for a bit because a lot of those compounds break down pretty quickly. Would it be okay to eat beets if you have rosacea, if it's a vasodilator? Uh, Panna, we'd have to look at the pathogenesis of rosacea. What is the cause of it? Um, is it the cause uh, congested blood with heat uh, moving upward? Uh, if that's the case, then by reducing the congestion and reducing inflammation, uh, the beach should help it. Uh, if, I mean, it seems that it would help a rosacea in most cases, uh, but I, yeah, but I, uh, uh, yeah, it depends on, but it's still going to depend on the pathogenesis. If it's I mean, there's not, rosacea is not going to be uh, coincident with dryness or, so yeah, I, th I would think that it would help rosacea. Beets reduce blood pressure. Yeah, as part of vasodilating, uh, because beets uh, dilate blood vessels and are a diuretic, it reduces blood pressure, right? So if the uh, blood vessels are squeezing down, uh, squeezing down on the blood, the pressure is going to go up. If they relax, the pressure goes down. And if you have uh, a diuretic that makes you pee, you're going to uh, reduce uh, blood volume and that reduces blood pressure. Judith, you mentioned you get constipated with beets and it doesn't happen with other foods. I would say then beets are not your, you know, are not your remedy. There's so many wonderful foods out there. Every food has really special qualities about it. Um, you know, you don't need to feel like you're missing out uh, on something if beets don't work for you. Uh, Ayurveda is, is the art of figuring out which foods work for you and which foods don't. So I would just leave them alone if they don't work for you. What about people taking blood pressure medicine and consuming beets? Yeah, anything that uh, affects the liver can, um, and anything that improves and helps the liver also um, uh uh, makes clearance of pharmaceuticals uh, faster. So that could change your way your body's processing these pharmaceuticals. So you have to look at that. What if beets and greens are cooked? Um, if you cook the uh, beets or the greens, the oxalic acids are neutralized. Can beets be roasted without wrapping in foil? Yeah. Yeah, I usually uh, don't wrap them in foil. I don't. I don't uh, put them in foil at all. And I never mix aluminum foil with tomato sauce. The acids just burn right through the uh, foil and you end up eating a whole lot of aluminum that way.
Great, you guys were an awesome crowd. Uh, thank you for your questions. Really great, great questions. Um, I hope this has been a helpful presentation. I, uh, I enjoyed uh, putting this together. We learned a lot at Joyful Belly about beats in the process. And, uh, and we're excited to share it with you, with the world. I wanna thank all of you for being interested in your body and being interested in your health. Uh, when you become healthier, uh, you start to radiate that health to others, right? It's not just disease that's contagious, health is also contagious. When people see a healthy person that's doing well, they wanna have some of that for themselves. And that um, is very inspiring. Uh, so by you showing up, you're inspiring the world. Um, and, uh, and that's a wonderful thing. Next week on, um, on Monday, I'm gonna give an introduction to our courses at Joyful Belly. And uh, there'll be a discount opportunity uh, for those who come to that course intro. Uh, so stay tuned uh, for next week if you wanna find out more about our courses and study with us at Joyful Belly. I look forward to seeing you uh, on next week's call and, uh, and or in the future, we'll be doing more of these uh, uh, talks uh, each month. Uh, we have some upcoming talks on varicose veins and acai and other great, uh, great foods uh, on the way. Uh, so I look forward uh, to uh, meeting with you again. Have a wonderful rest of your week, everybody. Take care, bye-bye.